Hey, uh, you should hit your headshots. Yeah, there we go. See, thanks. Thanks for the inspiration, bro. <laughs> I'm a pyro. <laughs> Thank you for the inspiration. Here, I got this. Ready? I got this. I got this. I got this. I got this. Yeah! <laughs> Teamwork, dude! I even- I even lagged during that and it worked out. <laughs> In Team Fortress 2, you can boil down the entire player base into two generalizations. The first one are those who base their levels of success in numbers. The kind of people who are willing to throw away everything of their own personal gain to reach their goal. That goal tending to be the highest score, most kills, or highest kill streak possible. And they're not going to let anything stand in their way. You know, they're the kind of people who keep a shit bucket under the desk. On the contrary, the second option is people who don't value their success in numbers quite as much. They see more success in how the match is played rather than the results at the end. These are the people who are willing to look past the best options and make the decision based on which one makes the best memory or maybe the best YouTube clip if they're that kind of... Wait a minute. These two kinds of people, while they are able to exist in the same lobby, tend to disagree. Mostly they disagree about right from wrong when it comes to which weapons you're supposed to use. The first kind, respectfully known as tryhards, like to pick their weapons based on which give them their satisfaction in numbers. You're well aware, many call this weapon selection the meta. And the people with competent mindsets tend to stick to the meta like peanut butter sticks to the spoon. The other side, which for the sake of this video I refer to as casuals, like having a larger palette to pick from. Many of them, like myself, prefer to put aside the meta all in the sake of good fun. Because of this, they tend to use weapons that the tryhards consider suboptimal, or in some cases, even bad. So France, right? <laughs> Today's subject for discussion is the spy's sexiest six-shooter. In more ways than one. In years past, it was part of the meta, yet across all of the major updates since then, it has been all but nerfed out of existence. Or was it? Well, it was certainly nerfed out of the meta, the classic combo of Kunai, Dead Ringer, and Ambassador has been swapped out for the more modern Kunai, Dead Ringer, and basically anything other than the Ambassador, or the Enforcer for that matter. Many of them reasonably argue that the true best option for Spy is the Stalk Revolver, and it's hard to go against what they say. You get six rounds of what H3VR considers 366 Ultra Magnum, each one dishing a nice amount of punch at roughly 120 rounds per minute. That's an unquestionable reliability so long as you can use the crosshair correctly. It's a weapon so rounded out that you can probably use it as a ball bearing. The only limitation of it being the class it's put on. If you mention the ambassador to any of the stock purists, they'll give you one of three reasons why they dislike it. Most of them just discuss the consistency I already spoke about. Some of them like to just parrot what Soundsmith said four years ago and say that it's terrible. And the third kind is Gunspy. However, as a man representing the casual spy players, I'd like to discuss why I still side with this old legend fallen from glory. Warning, this video is a subjective opinion and is not to be taken as advice. If you are sensitive to disagreement or in any way allergic to opinions that do not line up with your own, it is suggested you change programs. Viewer discretion is advised. Firstly, I want to argue that the Ambassador is in the exact position that it should be as an unlock weapon. And to show you what I mean, I'm going to have to look at a different class. Soldier is a class almost everyone is familiar with, including myself, and I think that most people who have ever explored Soldier's many primary options can agree that Stuck, all around, is the best option. Or the original, if you're a scrub. There are situations where other primaries would do jobs better, like a direct hit is better for dealing with single targets or sentry guns, but if you want a rocket launcher that's good at everything, Stock is the best way to go. And that's exactly how it should be. In other shooter games, or in any video game for that matter, a brand new player is typically given a very basic set of equipment, which in most cases is utter garbolium. The reason for this is because the game wants to incentivize grinding by hanging the new gear on a string in front of you. However, since TF2 unlockable primaries are not actually unlocked and are randomly dropped, the incentive to grind for equipment isn't really there. Because of this, the game gives the brand new player the best possible chance to succeed in terms of what they're given to use. The default kit, with the possible exception of melee weapons, is the best all-around set without any gimmicks to learn or stats to memorize. Which means the only obstacle to overcome in succeeding is skill. And because TF2 goes so far against the grain of a traditional FPS game, that's a really important part because the game has many, many learning curves, most of them rather steep. So the default primary is supposed to be the best primary all around. 
which the stock revolver is, and that's exactly how it should be. An unlock's purpose can go one of two ways. It's either a weapon designed to excel at a specific task for the trade-off of being weaker in the broader spectrum, or it's a weapon that largely does the same job as stock with some form of gimmick that changes how someone plays the class. An example of the former is the direct hit, like I mentioned before. Excelling in building destruction and scout countering, but weaker in crowd control, and in some cases weaker for rocket jumping. Another weapon on a different class would be the lock and load for similar reasons. An example of the latter would be the Frontier Justice. Functions rather similarly to stock with the same overall goal of shoot bad guy, but it carries with it a mechanic that changes your approach far more than it does the raw function of the weapon itself. This category is where I feel the ambassador falls, because its job is to deal damage, just like stock, but with the mechanic of headshots, your tactics change to accomplish the same task. What I feel is an example of a poorly balanced weapon is the panic attack. It's a good weapon that a lot of people use, but you play with it the exact same way that you do a stock with very minimal benefits. In other words, you could basically pick one or the other depending on which one you think looks cooler, because your skill in aiming will make a far, far greater difference in that than the stat changes will. So the Ambassador is what people sometimes call a side grade. It does the same job as stock, arguably less reliably, but in a fun way. Although I am going to contradict myself a little, because while I do believe this primary falls into the alternative to stock category, it does lean a bit into the specific role category. Because I don't know if you can do math, but 102 in one shot is faster than 120 in three shots. Which leads me to my second point. In Team Fortress 2, burst damage is king. For this, I'm going to give you another example involving other classes. Heavy's primary weapon's a force to be reckoned with, with a higher damage per second than almost every other weapon in the game. In a head-on assault, Heavy is extremely powerful and can often be a game changer or a stalemate breaker. So why is it that no one screams overpower to the massive health, massive damage, massive di massive man that is Heavy TF2? Because burst damage is king. Why is it that 125 health and a shotgun can fight against a heavy by corner peeking or by dodging in such a way where tracking is difficult? Because burst damage is king. A soldier with a direct hit can corner peek in the same fashion. Because burst damage is king. And the very pick class spy that you are playing, and sniper for that matter, will drop him very fast because burst damage is king. Revolvers are no different. Although you are firing six moderately powerful rounds at a time, it leans a bit onto the sustained fire like a minigun or a flamethrower. This is because at maximum ramp up, you can do 60 damage with one shot, which is still a considerable amount, but of course, to do that, you have to be close enough to smell the cologne of whoever you're firing at. And on top of that, most of your interaction with the revolver will more than likely be at the range where you get the base damage of 40. In most situations, you will need more than one trigger pull to drop your enemy. Plus, you have to consider that Spy is the equivalent of Eggshell China. His fragile little French body has to dispense his damage as quickly as possible while also staying largely out of sight if he wants any chance of staying alive. Since the stock revolver requires a bit more sustained fire, you are at a much greater risk because you're exposed to the enemy fire for longer. Whereas, with the Ambassador, dealing anywhere from 54 to 102 damage before the enemy knows you're there, from an actually respectable distance, mind you. Oh! <laughs> Did you see that headshot? This is what an angry that fucking trucker! That gives you the burst damage advantage. I already know what some of you are thinking, well if they don't know you're there, why don't you use the knife? If you are thinking this, chances are you haven't played enough Spy to realize that there are numerous situations where going for a backstab would be suicide. Especially when the enemies are all clumped together in a push, and making a medic pick all but guarantees someone is going to accidentally body block you, turn around, and ruin your attempt. A Spy who goes almost exclusively for knife kills typically would just not attack and wait for a better opportunity. And in a lot of games, that works. I mean, casual TF2 is what it is, after all. But you also have to consider, players who use their brains tend to not give you many better opportunities. And when you happen to be holding a revolver which can do 102 damage before the enemy is alerted to your position, and that medic who was hit with some splash damage has 80 health happens to be in range, you get your oh-so-satisfying medic pick, all without alerting him or his teammates until he's already dead. And if you act correctly, you can even get away with your life intact. Also notice what I said about 80 health medic? 
There is something that stock purists tend to forget when they talk about the ambassador. Many of them argue, reasonably, since 102 damage isn't enough to kill a light class in one shot and you need two, it's barely faster than stock, so why bother? They seem to forget something. Considering this is a war zone, people aren't always at full health, and dropping a scout who has taken a small amount of damage with one shot instead of two or three is absolutely faster, especially when all it takes is one shot to alert the enemy that you're engaging. Scouts tend to be hard to hit, if you drop them from 125 to 23 health, before they begin to flail on like an inflatable tube man gives you a considerable advantage. And as an added bonus, people tend to have a mini heart attack when they hear the crit noise hit them, so even if you don't kill them, many of them tend to run away in fear because they don't know what hit them, all they know is 102 health vanished and someone is dishing critical hits. So it's a primary which does the same job as stock, while also being stronger in some situations for the cost of a little reliability and a higher skill floor. But all of what I've said so far, I believe is pretty null because of one thing. People tend to ask the question, why would you use the Ambassador when Stock and Diamondback are more or less objectively more powerful? And my response is, why should that matter? You see, Spy as a class isn't really that good to begin with. Since the very beginning of Manco's War on Gravel and Dust, Spy has been repeatedly pegged by Gavin's magic nerf button. Because of this, playing the meta for the sake of maximizing your performance is almost as pointless as picking the right pair of gloves to be the world's best rock juggler. Let's be honest, if you really wanted to be the most effective all-around powerful pick class, you wouldn't be playing Spy at all. You'd be playing Sniper, or potentially Scout. For that matter, if you wanted to be the world's best Sentry Nest Destroyer, you'd be playing an explosive class, not Spy. You aren't, or at least shouldn't be playing Spy because you're trying to be the most effective team player you can be. You're playing him because you enjoy the class. You like the cloaking and disguising mechanics, you like the backstabs and acting and maneuvering to the back lines like a snake. You're playing Spy for the fun of playing Spy, so you should pick your loadout based on what's the most fun for you. And I believe many people do this already. <laughs> <laughs> As I mentioned in the beginning, a considerable portion of Stock Revolver Spies are Gun Spies. Those people who are taking the already suboptimal class and are playing in an even more suboptimal playstyle. But they're having a blast doing it, which is how you should be playing Spy anyway. Again, if you wanted maximum effectiveness, you'd be playing class number 8 instead of class number 9. You like the invisibility part of Spy the most? There's a revolver for that. You like back stats more than anything? and never use your primary for damage? There's a knife for that. You like just toying with the engineers without really being a threat? There are two excellent watch and sapper combos for you. You like consistent reliability for a tool you don't really use unless you have to? Well, stock revolver is probably still your best option. As for me, my revolver and knife kills in games tend to be pretty much neck and neck. I get a lot of use out of it. So I pick the one that I enjoy the most. And believe me when I say, this is the most satisfying primary in the entire game. Seriously, the loose cannon has nothing on this. The amount of people who were cocky and chased me down thinking I'm free strange food only to be given a ranged lobotomy for trying, holy hell, nothing feels better. Why did you chase me? Why did this soldier chase me? <laughs> that was the worst mistake of your life! <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> I am likely somewhat biased towards the ambassador because I still don't really know how to trick stab, but my excuse is all of my training has gone into this thing, and it's even the best looking model of all of them as a bonus. Again, mildly biased because I have the festive one, which is the best one. I absolutely love this big six shooter, and that's why I use it all but exclusively when I play the class. At the end of the day, you should be equipping the tools you enjoy the most. Hell, isn't that why we play video games in the first place? If you're forcing yourself to use something that isn't fun because it's the meta, Remember this, what weapon is best is not necessarily the weapon that's the most powerful. If I get to dick around it... <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Huge thank you to my great friend T-Bandit for providing the SFM bit and the thumbnail. 